I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're visiting now with Rachel Dadigan, who is the Teacher of the Year for the Robles School District. Congratulations. Thank you. So tell us about your school. Tell us uh, what you teach. I'm a third grade teacher at Bell Avenue Elementary School in the Robles School District. Um, it's a very diverse school. Lots of uh, different languages and a lot of children from many different backgrounds. I've been teaching third grade for about 13 years, and prior to that, I taught fourth grade. Okay, so explain the, the challenges you face in a classroom where you have multiple languages, multiple cultures, and, and what that's like. Well, you know, we all kind of start on an even playing field, all trying to figure out a little bit about everyone, but the children are fantastic about um, all bringing forth wonderful things to share culturally. We learn to say hello in many different languages. We learn uh, that there's many different New Year's and days of celebration, and we learn to celebrate the differences that children bring and share. And we just kind of continue that all through the year. Parents are wonderful about bringing in different types of foods and, and uh, you know, helping teach the different cultures. But it is a challenging, a challenging job when you have um, many students who are just learning the English language. Luckily, usually we have someone that is fluent in the language that maybe a child is learning. So they kind of help act, act as a translator and help uh, you know, the children who may not completely understand everything, understand. So it's, it's a classroom where lots of talking goes on and lots of talking in different languages um, as, as we go throughout the school day. But that's a good thing, we, we want them talking. <laughs> But if you've got kids with multiple languages, uh, in, in, by the time they're in third grade, if they've gone through your system, they have some, some school experience and they have you know, the, uh, the exposure to, to English and other languages too. True. Yeah. Many of them, though, ha are often new to the United States uh, yeah. and come, you know, um, you know, I've had students that just entered and they start with, with no English at all. So it's, it's always kind of a guessing game when you have a new student entering that's bilingual. Um, but it's not overwhelming in any way. To me, that's the only type of teaching I know. Um, I've been teaching at Bell for 19 years now, and um, there's been different trends and different waves with uh, the different um, languages spoken. Sometimes, you know, we have um, more Spanish, or years ago it was a big um, Russian. Um, um, population, but there's, somehow teaching just happens. And I, I'm not quite sure how to even explain how that process always takes place with such a, a, a diverse uh, classroom, but uh, the children learn and they make growth and they do very well and they're very supportive of each other and, and of me um, as, as we, we go through the school day. So um, it's, it's a great learning experience for myself as well. Mm. So now you've got uh, the addition of the, uh, the Common Core this year, and you've got to kind of refocus some things. Do you see that as an advantage in the way you know, you're dealing with multicultural kids where um, you're focused on not just the answer, but how you got to the answer, and then when you get the answer, let's talk about the answer. I think there's a definite benefit for children realizing that there's more than one solution and that there's more than one way to solve a problem. Um, I feel it's the way that I've always taught. And um, so it, it doesn't feel like a huge shift in, in philosophy for me. But it, it is nice for children to realize and to have it reinforced that it's important not just to, ha just to have a, a, an answer, but it, more importantly, how did that answer come about? And if you're not sure of an answer, what are some ideas that you can you know, suggest of where to start? It's also great to teach teamwork, kids working and talking together, and especially in a bilingual situation where uh, children are, are learning and acquiring English. The more they speak, the, the better they do, the more advancement they make. Mm -hmm. So um, I, think, I think it definitely has positive attributes. It'll be a change. It, you know, yeah. for, for many students, it is a, it's a different way of doing things, but I think it's also empowering for them to realize that their voice is, is heard and their ideas are important, and it's just not a, a one, one straight way to get an answer. There's many different answers, 
And it's important to know what doesn't work also and to share that out and discuss that. So in your 19 years as a teacher, you've probably seen some, some big changes in education. The pendulum has swung yeah. back and forth many times, many times. What, what, what do you think has been the biggest change in all that time for you? You know, I think there was a period um, when I first entered education where we really needed to create much of our own curriculum. Um, in around 2000, um, things changed with the adoption of, um, with some of the adoption of the language arts curriculum and things became very um, scripted. Um, so it kind of, I think, took away from some of the creativity that some teachers might have used. And now I think uh, the pendulum swings again and creativity needs to be in the classroom. I think it's needed to be all along. Mm -hmm. I never tossed it out. I continued to do what I knew uh, was best for children. And, uh, and you know, used, used the curriculum, but also used uh, my creative mind to, 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 to teach and to, you know, do good te teaching. So what motivated you to become a teacher in the first place? Was this always your plan? It was not my plan. It was what I was not going to do. Well, what, what were you going to well, do? Well, I did not know that. Okay. I'm a fourth generation teacher. Really? Yes. Okay. And uh, not just my mother, my grandmother, my great-grandmother, but all my aunts and uncles hold credentials. I even married into a teaching family. But the one thing, and I loved being in the classroom growing up. Oh, I, I loved it. I loved help checking papers, and, and I loved all of that. But I wanted to do something different. I wanted to blaze a new trail and to do something different. I think probably just the spunk in me mm -hmm. wanted to do something different than, than what I had grown up with. So uh, well, you my, showed them, didn't you? Oh my goodness! So I started <laughs> off college, and you know, was going to either go into nursing or business. I'm not quite sure, but I knew I was not going to go into teaching, and I was miserable. So after the first semester, you know, I I declared my major and went into teaching, and have been so happy ever since. Isn't it interesting that, uh, that no matter what you tried, you kind of gravitated toward it? It's kind of in your blood. It is, you know what? It's the way I was raised. It's the way things were explained to me. Vacations in the summer were teaching experiences. Everything in life was a teaching experience for me. The way that I was spoken to, the way things were explained to me, it's, it's, it was just second nature. I really knew nothing else. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why it's just been such a pleasurable, easy, I shouldn't say easy, easy in some aspects right. um, to do, and I've never regretted it. I love, I love my job, love it. So what would you say to those people that are considering teaching as a profession? It is probably the most rewarding thing that I could think of that you can do. You are touching the future. You are inspiring children that didn't know that they could be inspired. Uh, and it, it just goes beyond just academic learning, it goes into, you know, teaching children to believe in themselves, to reach big dreams, to, it, it's just such a vast way you impact lives. And I don't think you really realize it until, you know, maybe sometimes it's years later when children come back and say to you, um, you know, I'll never forget when, or I never wanted to leave your room, or I couldn't wait to get there every day. So it, it's a definitely a rewarding, hard, <laughs> long days, mm -hmm. you know, it never really turns off. It's kind of, I don't think of it as a job, I think of it as a way of life, because it's just constant. I have my notepad pad by uh, my bed at night for when I wake up and jot down the ideas. Um, but it, it is definitely a, a choice and a path that, that I am very pleased with that I took. So how do you feel about being a teacher of the year? It is absolutely a wonderful, exciting honor, and I think one of the things that I'm uh, most proud of is how, how excited my two children are of me. Mm -hmm. And um, I tell you, all the little words of wisdom that I've given to them through their educational years, I've heard it all summer with writing my essays. Did you proofread, Mom? Are you doing your best? <laughs> Take your time, you know. Um, your words came back to haunt you. Oh yeah. my goodness gracious. Uh. But my children are so, uh, very, very proud. And um, 
it, it's neat to see them be a cheerleader for me when I've always been uh, their cheerleader. And my husband, likewise, just, you know, he says, I'm always proud of you, but this is a very exciting time. Well, your entire district is proud, I'm sure. Um, we're Thank speaking you. with uh, Rachel Dadigan, who is the Teacher of the Year for the Robles School District. Congratulations. Thank you.